The word rational is derived from the word ratio, which means quotient. The rational numbers are numbers which are numbers which can be written as a quotient of two integers, such that a over b, wherein b must not be equal to zero. B is not equal to zero because if B is zero, that will give us undefined. Now, let us determine or let's have some examples of rational numbers. Examples are the number five. We know that this is a whole number, but any whole number, just like five, can be written as a rational number that is equal to 5 over 1. Another is 0 0.06 that is equal to 6 over how many zeros? So we have two zeros for the denominator. To write decimal, just count the number of decimal point and that is equivalent to zeros. One, two, so two zeros. Let's say 0 0.25. This is equivalent to 25 over two decimal place, so two zeros. We also have Zero point three, then the bar sign on top of the number three. So this is equivalent to copy the number three over we have one decimal place, but instead of writing zeros, we're going to write nine. And to simplify that is equal to one over three. One. So this is the introduction of rational numbers. And now let us determine which of the following numbers from 1 to 10 are rational number and which are not. I will answer numbers 1, 2, and 3. Then you will answer 3, a 4, this Sorry for this, 3 and 3, so this will become 4, uh, 3, let's say 3 sub 1, and 3 sub 2. You're going to answer 3 sub 2 to numbers 10. Okay? Again, I will answer numbers 1, 2, and 3. So then you're going to answer 3 sub 2 up to 10. Okay, let's name it 3A and 3. Okay. Determine which of the following is a rational number. Number one, square root of four. We know that the square root of four is equal to two. And two can be written in rational form as two over one. Two over one. So this is a rational number. Okay? Number one, rational number. Number two, pi. The value of pi is 3.14, 16, and so on. We know that pi has infinite place for the decimal. So this is not a rational number because we cannot write it in A over B form. And 3a, 1 over 12. This is a rational number. Okay. Next, 3b. It's your turn to answer numbers 3b to number 10. Number 3 and 
Number four, 1.89. Number five, 0.23 in the bar. Number six, 0 0.1313. Number seven, 1.75 in reefs or over five. Number nine, 0 0.5. And number 10 is square root of five. If you want to answer num uh, 3B to 10, you can pause the video. Then after answering, you can resume watching and check your answers. For 3B, 10. This is a rational number. Why? Because 10 can be written as 10 over 1. Number 4. 1.89 Rational number or not? It is a rational number. Why? Because 1.89 can be written as a rational number. In rational form. Number 5, 0 0.23 in the bar. So this is a rational Later on, we're going to write how to simplify a decimal with the bar on top of the number. Okay, number four, this can be written as 189 over how many decimal place? One, two, so two zeros now. So this will be the rational form. For number three, the rational form is 10 over one. And in this case, 23 over 99. Okay, this is the rational form. We're going to talk on how to simplify this kind of, um, of decimal in our next videos. Simplifying, terminating, and non-repeating non decimal. Number 6, 0 0.1313. 13. This is rational. Again, we're going to discuss in our next videos on how to simplify or how to write this decimal form into rational number, rational form. 1.75, rational. So that is 175 over 100. Obviously, 4 over 5, it is a rational number. Number 9, 0 0.5, it is equal to 5 over 10. So, it is a rational number. And number 10, square root of 5. Square root of 5 is a rational number. Because 5 is not a perfect number. Unlike in number one, four is a perfect number, can be simplified. Square root of four is two. Well, in this case, we can write it into a rational number. So this is not rational. Not a rational number. Okay, that is on how to determine whether the decimal is a rational or not. Thank you for rational watching. Rational numbers are the decimal numbers that are non-repeating and non-terminating numbers. So our famous example of irrational number is the pi, the e, or the ln in higher mathematics. Now, how are we going to classify whether a number is an irrational number. So we have this what we call perfect square numbers. Perfect square numbers are one square, that is one. Two square, that is two times two, which is four. Three square, that is 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 squared, that is 4 times 4, 16. 
and 5 square that is 5 times 5 25 so these are the perfect square numbers 1 4 9 16 25 if we're going to get the square root of that numbers let's say we have a square root of 1 that will give us 1 a square root of 4 that will give us 2 Square root of 9 will give us 3. Square root of 4, oh, square root of 16, that will give us 4. How about if we have a square root of 2, a square root of 3, a square root of 5, a square root of 7? The following numbers inside our radical are not perfect square numbers. So, these are the examples of our irrational numbers. Okay. This is our radical sign. So, let us familiarize our radical. If we have cube root of 5, this is what we call the index. This is the radical sign, and this is our radicand. So those are irrational numbers. Now, how are we going to locate irrational numbers in our number line? So let's say this is our number line. Now we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. We know that 0 is, square root of 0 is 0. Now we have square root of 1, that is 1. Square root of 4, the square root of 4, that is 2. So that is 2. The square root of 9, that is 3. And the square root of 16, that is 4. How are we going to locate the following irrational numbers? Let's say the square root of 10. The square root of 5. Square root of 15. Okay. Those A, B, and C. Let us locate using our number line. The square root of 10, which is greater? The square root of 9 or the square root of 10? Of course, the square root of 10. That means the square root of 10 is located on the right side of the square root of 9. Maybe it's here. This is our square root of 10. Next, square root of 5. Square root of 5 is higher than square root of 4. That means on the right side of 2. So let's say here. This is square root of 5. And square root of 15. 15 is before square root of 16. So on the left side of 4. So this is the square root of 15. How about if you have the cube root? Let's say cube root of 5. So, let us find first our perfect cube numbers. Perfect cube numbers. Cube numbers, if we have... If we have one cube, that is one times one times one. If we have two cube, that is two times two times two. 
If you have 3 cube, that is 3 times 3 times 3. 27. If you have 4 cube, that is 4 times 4 times 4. 64. These numbers are what we call the perfect cube numbers. If we're going to get the cube root of 1, that will give us 1. Cube root of 8, that will give us 2. Cube root of 27, that will give us 3. And cube root of 64, that will give us 4. And so on. So if we're going to get cube root of 2, 2 is not a perfect cube. Therefore, cube root of 2 is an irrational number. Cube root of 5, 5 is not a perfect cube. Therefore, cube root of 5 is not a uh, cube root of 5 is an irrational number. Now, how are, how are we going to locate in our number line? Let's say our number line. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. We know that cube root of 1 is 1. Cube root of 8 is 2 and cube root of 27 is 3. Let us locate cube root of 10. Cube root of 10 that is on the right side of cube root of 8. So let's see. It is the cube root of 10. Let's say let us find cube root of 9. 9 is on the right side of cube root of 8. So let's see here. So those are the irrational numbers and on how we locate in our number line.